cheat grass or downy brome is an annual grass that can be a problem in native plant communities or seeded plant communities across the West. We're going to talk about how to graze plant communities that have cheat grass in them with the objective of controlling, minimizing, or maybe even reducing the amount of cheat grass in these plant communities. When we're grazing sites with cheat grass, we need to keep three things in mind. The first is the mindset of managing for what we want, not for managing against what we don't want. And that leads us to point number two. The most important thing is to manage for the health, vigor, and population of the desirable grass species. Here we've got some grass that's bordering this area of cheat grass. Our management strategies should focus on managing for the health of this desirable perennial species, not against trying to use the cheat grass during the narrow window that you can graze it. And the third thing is bringing these strategies together with an integrated management approach that may include herbicides or other options for controlling the cheat grass. But first and foremost, we have to focus on managing for what we want, not against what we don't want. Cheat grass is an annual grass, meaning it germinates, produces a plant, goes to seed, and dies all within the same year. Cheat grass generally germinates in the fall of the year and overwinters as a small vegetative plant and then takes advantage of early spring moisture conditions to make its rapid growth, put on a seed head, and then go dormant for the remainder of the year. Livestock managers often focus their grazing pressure on cheatgrass early in the spring, which is the only time it's really desirable as a livestock feed. That can be okay, but it can also be very dangerous because the animals tend to shift from grazing the cheatgrass to grazing the desirable cool season species very quickly. And if we stay too long, then those animals will actually set back our desirable cool season species. When that cheatgrass plant starts to produce a seed head, it becomes much less desirable to the livestock. So they start grazing these other plants, which are the ones we're trying to encourage to take over this area. So we can actually move that pasture backwards if we're not playing, paying extremely close attention. So we can, we can graze these cheatgrass plants early, but we have to be very diligent. And as soon as those livestock species, as soon as the livestock or grazing animals change their grazing from this cheatgrass to these other desirable cool season perennial species, then we have to remove livestock from that pasture if we want to make some headway managing our cheatgrass problem. Here's an example where livestock grazing has been allowed to occur for too long into the season. You'll notice some cheatgrass occurring in this pasture. Where are these livestock grazing? Well, they're not grazing the cheatgrass. Seed heads have already been set on the cheatgrass and you can see it starting to turn color. These livestock are definitely grazing the desirable grasses in this pasture rather than grazing the cheatgrass and they're causing the problem to get bigger, not reduce. Let's talk about using an integrated approach for control of cheatgrass and pastures. This area was treated with a herbicide to control the cheatgrass and did so very successfully several years ago. However, management was not changed. You'll notice the cheatgrass is back. Without changing the management along with herbicide treatments, you won't solve the problem. Herbicide is simply a band-aid. It does not address the underlying problem that causes the cheatgrass to be in the pasture in the first place. You have to fix the underlying problem in order to make headway. Here's a spot in a pasture that about three years ago was almost entirely cheatgrass. But through management for the desirable perennial grasses, in this case, western wheatgrass, we've been able to reduce the population of cheatgrass and improve the population of western wheatgrass. Maybe another three to five years, the cheatgrass will almost be gone from this and the western wheatgrass will dominate. An important point, the management focused for what we wanted to see here, the western wheatgrass, rather than focusing against the cheatgrass. No herbicide was used, just grazing at the proper time with the proper amount of animals and leaving the appropriate amount of residual cover was put on this site. Here's a resource you need to be aware of, the Cheatgrass Management Manual. This is the go-to source for management of cheatgrass in Wyoming and Colorado and there are sections specifically on grazing management and cheatgrass. 
I hope this information has been useful. Remember to manage for what you want, not against what you don't want. The health and vigor of those desirable grasses are the key to outcompeting cheatgrass, and using an integrated management approach will be key to your success against cheatgrass. From the University of Wyoming Extension, I'm Dallas Mount.